The pack is back on top. The Chiefs totally went off. Everything about the Jigs is bad. Was the Bills' success a fad? And I hope these positive tests stop. Welcome to the Mishpo. All right, everybody, welcome into the week 15 episode of the Mishpo. Uh, we are in the playoffs, so things are starting to get a bit more spicy. But yeah, these positive tests, I believe like in the last like two days, we've had about the same amount of tests positive as the uh, last like couple months of the season. So not, uh, not great. Um, I've, well, oh, almost forgot the beer, so we'll jump into this beer real quick, and then we'll get into the football. Alrighty, let's get on to the matchup recaps from last week. First up was me versus Lincoln. Um, this one was pretty important, uh, not for getting into the playoffs, but for seeding as whoever won this one would get the first round by as the winner of the men's division. And um, it was fairly close early on, but uh, that Lamar Jackson injury did not help at all. Obviously, he had some other guys not perform super great, but um, you know, that just happens sometimes. I ended up getting the victory here, uh, 135.22 to 97.18. And 67% of people got the uh, matchup correct and there were only three people that made their picks this week it was me abby and adam um so a lot of the matchups are going to have very similar percentages so 67 percent moving us on to michael versus fiala the closest matchup of the of the uh week um didn't really have much playoff implication i think except for maybe seeding potentially um but uh yeah Decently high scoring, pretty close, as I said, um, and a bit upsetting according to the numbers. Uh, Michael, an upsetting as an upset matchup, not we're all sad that Michael lost, which is probably true for only Fiala. He's probably only sad about that loss, because uh, Michael won here 113.04 to 109.02, and that upset comes from this. The 0% of people picked that one correct. Moving us on to Colin versus Sam. This one did have some playoff implications. Uh, Colin needed to win and have a higher score uh, on the season uh, points total compared to some of the other guys around his area. And spoiler alert, Colin was about 10 points short, so that sucks for him. He did get the victory, which was a you know big crucial part of that, and a decent score in doing so. Uh, got the win, 128.52 to 102.14 and uh 33 percent of people got that one correct and i'll just say this right now every single matchup from now on 33 percent of people got it correct so moving us on to t corn versus abby uh two teams that were locked into the playoffs and seating would not be affected by the outcome of this matchup so really just kind of a uh, pre-playoff warm-up kind of matchup um and uh once again abby just dominated this week uh, that might be the highest points on the season so far. Definitely up there. Um, we'll just get into it. 191.32 to 110.6. Um, and as I said, 33%. Uh, yeah, and that was the biggest blow of the se of the uh, week. Um, and T-Corn scored above 100 points. So that just shows you how dominant Abby has been. And of course, she won the beer. For this past week she probably won like three or four over the course of the season so she'll be just probably getting a six pack so moving us on to state farm versus bruce uh this matchup also had playoff implications um if bruce wins and gets a, the right amount of points um then he'll make the playoffs and spoiler alert he made made the playoffs um bruce is the sixth seed in the playoffs he got the victory here, 105.52 to 83.42 um, against State Farm there, and 33% of people got that one correct. Moving us on to Derek versus Brian, another matchup with playoff implications. Um, Derek, going into the last week, was that number six seed, so he needed to win and then, you know, get more points than the rest of the people around him. Um, but he wasn't able to do either, unfortunately. Uh, he got the loss to Brian here, 126.14 to 
to 105.4, so Derek drops down into the Sacco. And I was really hoping that uh, he was going to make the playoffs. That'd be kind of interesting, but not this year. So 33% of people got that one correct. Moving us on to the final matchup of the week. Uh, this one was probably the highest scoring total with about 300 points being scored between the two teams. And a lot of them came in that Monday night game from Caleb. Uh, he was down a decent amount, I believe. Um, he mentioned that he had a 1% chance to win at one point. But uh, he ended up beating Adam by a pretty decent margin. Um, Caleb got the victory 161.08 to Adam's 140.4. Um, and 33% of people got them correct. So uh, that one didn't really have much playoff, playoff implications. Caleb was locked in, and I'm pretty sure Adam was locked out. So uh, for the week, Abby led the everybody, the three of us, with points with four. Um, but despite all that, State Farm still leads the way for total and average with 61 total and five and a half average. So that was last week's matchups. Alrighty, on to the power rankings. Um, at 14th, uh, we've got Adam. Uh, despite your pretty decent scoring uh, last week, you still have the worst record in the league and the least amount of points scored in the league. So, um, not much you can do about that. The, uh, you know, 14th ranked um, for the season. And uh, usually during this section, I would mention everyone's record. But at this point in the season, the record doesn't matter. So I'll just... Uh, just say where you're seated in in the playoffs. So Adam is 14th, seated 14th. Uh, last week was 14th. So you know, I mean, had some tough breaks there, Adam. But uh, you know, you're the worst. So we'll see if you can uh, get a win next week or this week and uh, not be Sacco again, which would be interesting. But uh, moving us on to number 13, ranked 12th, uh, we've got State Farm. Um, lost to Bruce last week. Decently uh, high, s or decent scoring for you, I believe. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> you, I think, had the lowest score on this on the week, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But I would much like Adam. We'll see if you can uh, not be Sacco after winning the championship last week. So <sighs> or last season. So that is State Farm at 13, number 12. We've got Sam. Um, last week you were 12. Uh, after you lost to Colin this past week, and uh, you're going up against, obviously you're in the playoffs. So this this kind of section here is going to be pretty similar for a lot of the people. Um, just going to try to win to stay either in the playoffs or get out of it. So that is Sam at 12, number 11, Fiala. Uh, you've really kind of been on a tailspin the last couple weeks. Uh, you uh, you did lose to Michael uh, last week. And, uh, you know, your guys just have not been showing up. So we'll see if you can uh, get a early departure from that toilet bowl and not be Sacco. So moving us on to number 10, speak of the devil, we've got Michael um, going up one spot from last week in the power rankings. And you are actually uh, ranked at number 9 in the standings in the league. So... Um, you beat Fiala, so that's cool. We'll see if you can get a win this week against an opponent that you probably should beat in the uh, playoffs. Toilet Bowl playoffs. Moving us on to number 9, we've got Derek uh, dropping a couple spots last week. Did not have your best performance last week. Uh, should you have had your best performance, you'd probably be in the playoffs proper right now, but you are in the Toilet Bowl for the Sacco. So we'll see if you can uh, get a victory this next week and avoid two years in a row for a Sacco punishment um, this year. Obviously much easier than last year, as you said in the chat. But, um, you know, if it was me, I think I'd rather do the calendar than the stand-up slash karaoke. But, uh, you know, to each their own, I guess. So... That is Derek at 9. Number 8, we've got Brian. Uh, really been coming on strong this last couple weeks, but uh, was not enough to get you out of the toilet bowl. Um, number 9 last week, after you beat Derek this past week. And uh, again, we'll see if you can get a victory against an opponent that you definitely have a shot to beat to get yourself out of contention for Sacco. Moving us on to number 7, Colin, literally probably like 10 points away from being in the playoffs right now. We'll just quickly vet that. Um, yeah, so Bruce 
in the playoffs has 1,545 points, and you've got 1,535 points with some decimals on there, but if you would have had 10 more points across the entire season column, you'd be in the playoffs right now, which is probably a bit more painful than losing this past week and missing it by a game, but, you know... That just means you're the best team in the uh, in the toilet bowl, which means you should get a good win this next week, right? So we'll see if you can do that and also avoid getting your sacko or second sacko punishment. Um, we have three guys down there that could get their second sacko punishment, um, so that's pretty fun. And we also moving on to number six have someone who could get their second championship. Bruce at number six, uh, getting into the playoffs by the skin of his teeth this past week, um, climbing up two spots from number eight this past week uh, after you beat State Farm. But uh, someone's not happy that that, that uh, their hubby is out of the playoffs. I'm not going to say who, but uh, let's just say you have to face that person this next week, and it might not be pretty. So <laughs> that is Bruce at number six. Number four. Five, we've got Caleb. You've been kind of up at the top pretty much all season long, uh, fluctuating between probably like number one and number six-ish, but you're sitting at number five. Uh, you beat Adam this past week after a pretty impressive scoring, uh, second most points on the week, um, so that's pretty good for you. Uh, we'll see if you can get a victory against a decent opponent, obviously, in the playoffs, and uh, continue on and see if you can get the championship. Moving us on to number four, we've got Lincoln. Um, could have had that number two seed in the playoffs, but uh, you were not able to pull it together last week. Uh, to no fault of your own, I guess, with some of the guys, with Lamar in particular, but, you know, that just happens sometimes. So, uh, you will, we'll see if you can continue and uh, get a good pr production this next week and continue on in these playoffs. Moving us on to number three, we've got our number one seed, T-Corn. Um, you lost but to Abby this past week, but she would have beaten anybody, which is kind of the story of this season, isn't it? So um, you don't have anything to worry about this week, though, um, as you are on bye. So that is pretty cool for you. Um, so uh, speaking of people on bye, number two, I've got myself, as I mentioned a couple times this episode so far, uh, beat Lincoln, got myself the first round by, which is pretty cool, so I'll just kind of relax this week. And it's a pretty good week to do that, I think, with the amount of uh, positive COVID tests coming out. So, I uh, really am not uh, jealous of anybody playing in a actual matchup this week. So, that is me at number two, and of course, Abby, our number one. Um, she's scored the most points on the season, obviously does not have the best record, but... Um, she is tied with second best record with me and Lincoln, um, but she is uh, by a wide margin actually got the most points on the season. I have the second most for reference and I have 1,805, whereas Abby has over 2,000. So that just kind of shows you how dominant she's been. Um, you know, Abby, I would play her next week if she were to win and, I, and I'm really hoping she loses because to be honest, she's the only team I'm really scared of in the playoffs. Um, obviously, I have myself ranked two. Um, so I basically am saying that I think I'm better than all of the other teams besides Abby. Um, but, you know, I don't make the rules. I just read them. Um, but, yeah, Abby, you've got yourself a playoff matchup this week. But uh, we'll see if you can and continue what you've been doing all season and scoring a lot of points. So that is Abby at number one. Alrighty, we will now be moving on to this week's playoff round one matches. Match ups. Obviously, I would usually start with myself, but I've got a buy. So I will be jumping into Bruce versus Abby. Uh, this matchup uh, is going to be a very interesting one. Obviously, Abby is probably the favorite here, um, just based off of how she's done this season. But she is kind of affected right now, potentially, with some uh, COVID issue, uh, Cooper Cup. Not tested positive himself, but there is a lot of stuff spreading around the Los Angeles Rams system. And then uh, Van Jefferson also is on your bench. Um, he also is obviously a Ram. So 
And then just a multitude of other things to go on. Um, whereas on Bruce's side, um, Josh Allen's been kind of... He did all right. Actually, I think he was the best quarterback on the week last week. But uh, we'll see if he can keep it up. And then uh, kind of some hodgepodge guys. Obviously, you're in the playoffs, so not the worst. But definitely some guys that you would uh, rather have um, are on other teams. But... Uh, you know, I did initially have Bruce down here as my upset pick, but I just can't pick against Abby. She's just been going off, and so I'm just going to I'm gonna pick Abby here. You know what, Joey? Stay with your choices. I'm going to pick Bruce as my upset pick for the week, also because I didn't pick anybody else for my upset. So I'm going to pick Bruce here as my upset, and that's also just a bit of uh, wishful thinking and hoping that Bruce wins so I don't have to face Abby. So he survi survived the Abby train once before we'll see if he can do it again moving on to our second playoff matchup we've got lincoln versus caleb uh for lincoln obviously we've got that lamar jackson injury that you're gonna have to deal with um and you do have your uh your uh dolphins coming back from by so mike gusecki and jalen waddle are getting back into that lineup <laughs> You do have some uh, injuries and some COVID issues there on your bench with Keenan Allen, Tony Pollard, and Jared Cook. So we'll see if you can get at least probably Keenan Allen you want the most back. Get him back in your lineup there. Um, and then over on Caleb's side, uh, you've got some COVID issues as well. Uh, what is that? Duke Johnson or David Johnson's been got some COVID issues lately. James Conner got injured a bit on the back half of that. Uh, game on Monday night and uh, other than that it seems like you're pretty good in terms of health and, and availability so I will be picking uh, Caleb as my winner for this matchup um, I think he's just got a pretty solid lineup out there and uh, he can pull it off so moving us on to Adam versus Colin first up for Colin um, Probably the most affected by COVID as of now, with three of your guys in your starting lineup currently on the COVID list with Daryl Henderson, Odell Beckham Jr., and uh, Austin Hooper. Obviously, some pretty key players. Daryl has been solid pretty much all year. Odell has been great the last three weeks. And uh, Hooper is pretty solid, especially um, when he's the only tight end around, uh, as has been the case for the last game or so. Um, so obviously we'll need to find some replacements for them. Um, and then Adam's team, uh, putting off, or coming off a week of scoring 140 points, that's uh, pretty much the same lineup out there, pretty much similar situations. Uh, Tyler Heineke on your bench has got uh, questionable. And then Jarvis Landry is on the COVID list, but not sure if you would have played him anyways. Uh, probably wouldn't have. So uh, with all that said, I will be picking Adam here. And I will be picking him as my lock pick for the week. Oh my, that feels scary to say. But uh, I just with the COVID issues and just with the players themselves, I do think that um, Adam has got a pretty good shot to get the win this week. <clears throat> Moving us on to Fiala versus Derek. Um, for uh, who we got here, Derek. Um, uh, some questionable with uh, Austin Eckler right there. Uh, Adam Thielen has been out with the COVID, or not COVID, he's got just the standard injury. Um, and then Damien Harris and Sammy Watkins are also questionable at the moment. Um, other than that, you know, it's just your normal team. Devontae Parker is coming back off by, um, I don't know. So I'm sure he'll, well, he's currently in your starting lineup, so he'll probably play a role in this week's matchup. And then Fiala, um, questionable. Terry McLaurin, not a good week last week, scoring zero points, I believe. Um, and then getting injured, obviously. Adrian Peterson missed last week as well. And then DeAndre Swift, obviously, has been injured for a couple weeks now, so we'll see if you can get him back into your lineup. Um, with all that said, I will be picking Derek for this matchup. Um, so... Moving us on to State versus Michael. First up for Michael, um, again, a similar situation in Minnesota as in Los Angeles. Um, a bit of a mini outbreak situation there for COVID. Alexander Madison's already tested positive. 
and Dalvin Cook is working pretty close with him, so we'll see if Dalvin can stay off that COVID list. Um, obviously a very, very good player in Dalvin Cook. And then a couple injuries, obviously I mentioned Alexander Madison, but then JD McKissick is also hurt, and TJ Hawkinson, and then also Foster Moreau, so quite a few injuries. Um, and COVID situations, so we'll see if uh, you can survive and uh, get some good players out there. <laughs> Moving us on to State Farm, we've got a, uh, a slew of injuries on this side as well. We've got Miles Sanders, DJ Moore, and Kadarius Tony currently in your starting lineup with injuries, but the bench is looking pretty good um, in terms of injuries. Uh, not saying anything about the quality of the players, but just the injury status. Um, with all of that in mind, I will, will still be picking Michael. Um, obviously, if Dalvin doesn't play, that's a big hit for you, but I still think you've got some solid pieces besides him to uh, get you that victory there. Moving us on to the final matchup of the week. Um, we've got Sam versus Brian. First up for Sam, uh, you know, just your standard lineup that you've been putting out all season. On the bench, you do have uh, Melvin Gordon question well did play last week and did pretty solid if I remember correctly and then we've got Jamar Jefferson the Lions running back who could play a pretty decent role should um, those other guys stay on COVID slash injury lists um, so pretty standard stuff over there for Sam and then Brian we've got uh, again pretty standard obviously Rogers has been questionable for like six months now just kidding that's like a month or so now um, with that toe injury, but he seems to be fine, but, uh, still the questionable tag. And then there's Zach Moss, who was a healthy scratch, not much, not sure how much he'll actually contribute. And then obviously Darren Waller, um, been out for a couple weeks here, so we'll see if you can get him back just in time for playoffs. With all that said, I will be picking Brian as my winner for this matchup, uh, I'm thirsty, and we'll be right back. Alrighty, everybody. That'll do it for the week 15 episode of the Mishpo. Um, good luck to everybody, because no one's playing me, so I hope everybody has the best. Well, I guess more luck for Bruce than anybody, just because I really don't want to play Abby. Um, so I hope you get her out of the way, Bruce. Um, you've done it before. Let's see if we can do it again. But, uh, no, actually, good luck to everybody. And, um, you know, just, just, uh, be good, I guess. Um, so with that, thank you, and thank you. All right, this flip will be going to my fellow bye week buddy. We've got T-Corn. Uh, enjoy your bye week and hopefully a shotgun. Nope, just the bye week. <laughs>